Very exciting day, again, another really exciting day. Behind me, I've got an IBC tank cut in half, which is going to be a pond for the new ducks. And behind that, I've got two big boxes, one with a male Muscovian and one with a female Muscovian. I'm just headed back out onto the road, so I'm gonna stop filming shortly. But uh, yeah, on my way home with our new ducks. I've just got home and got our new ducks. So they came in these massive boxes. Look, that's the female. They're about 15 weeks old, we think. And that means they're going to be, they haven't started laying yet, or she hasn't started laying yet, but uh, it means they're, you know, young and they're gonna be here for their whole lives, pretty much, or their whole productive lives. And they're going to have this enclosure, which they're gonna share with our breeding pair of meat chickens. So I'll just quickly walk you around. You can see the size. It's a lovely, huge, big space they've got. There's several houses to choose from. There's a really big, spacious one up there, which I suspect the ducks will take. And then there's what we call the penthouse which is up here, which hopefully the chickens are using. If not, we might have to come up a couple of evenings and sort of encourage them to use it. But there's the two, the breeding pair of our meat chickens, look. A little bit uh, flighty, those guys. And uh, yeah, so my wife's brought up our little tortoise paddling pool. We're gonna see if the ducks like that. I've also picked up a, a half an IBC from their old home. So they're being rehomed because basically where they were before, they were much loved pets and the, the young son of the family would feed them every day and um, he's really upset actually that they're, uh, they're going away. But it just, it, for whatever reason, it was decided that it wasn't suitable for them to stay there. I think it's because they have a dog and they weren't quite sure whether or not they could trust the dog when they went away. So anyway, the... Moral of the story is that they're, they're coming here to their new home and we've obviously, we've extended the offer to the old family that had them and their son that they can come and visit them whenever they wish and we'll send them lots of photos. And this is the boy, I think. And look, he's even bigger. Look at the size of him. All right, son? Yeah. So we're gonna get them in now. Ever so happy here. There you go. See, they're calm, aren't they, son? Gorgeous, aren't they? So happy. We've missed up some geese, haven't we? Oh, how's that? Have a nice stretch after being in that box. It was only a 20 minute journey, but obviously they're quite big ducks, so they're having a nice stretch after being in that box. Go and they did have a nice big space where they were before. Pigs come and say hello as well. They did have a nice big space where they were before, but obviously they've got even more space here, which is awesome. And uh, yeah. Thank you, mate. I'm going to go to the pigs. Okay. Jackie, they're not... Have a look at that wire. No, they're nowhere near it. It's still working. Okay. Yeah. They never come across that gap. Okay. okay. So they found the water. Maybe I'll have a nice drink and a wash. <laughs> now, I know at the house they were at before, they... Um, the previous owners, they had cut, as I say, an IBC in, in half, a tank in half, to make a pond for them. But for whatever reason, they didn't like going up the ramp to get in. So we will monitor them and make sure that they're happy getting in and out this little pond. And if they're not, then I'm, well, I'm probably going to do it anyway at some point. But if they are happy getting in and out here, I won't rush. But if they're not getting in, out, in and out of here, 
by the end of the day, then I will tomorrow come and basically dig that IBC into the ground here and make a pond that they can get into and out of at ground level. But we'll see how they get on first. And as you can see, look, they're super calm. My wife's about to walk fairly close to them and you know, they're not, they're not getting spooked. And that's just lovely to see. You're building a ramp, love. Yeah. Yeah. And as I said yesterday, I love ducks, geese, and it's been too long since we had ducks here. So yeah, I'm super happy. Come here. So I've got a special treat today as well. We are babysitting for my two nieces. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> what animals do you like the best? Ducks. Yeah? Yeah. Where are the ducks? Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen all our animals today? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe say, see you later. See you later. <laughs> so it's now lunchtime and I've just got back to the house. I had to go off and get some timber because today I am building my butchery. I'm hoping that this weekend I'll be able to build the butchery and process the pig, but we shall see. We shall see how the time goes. So I'm going to build the butchery in here. I think it's somewhere where, because it's not going to look particularly pretty. So I think it's somewhere out the way. And I just think it's going to be the best space. Just here in this little clearing in one of our woods near the camp. I'm just assessing now the best way of bringing in the materials I need. Somewhere we have, and I will admit, I thought it was here. I was expecting to see it. It's why I look a little bit bemused, if you are wondering. I was expecting to find a giant yellow tarpaulin. And that's what I was going to use, actually, as the roof and walls. So I think I'll need to um, unload what I've got. I've also had a phone call from one of our fruit and veg shops saying that the bins are full so I've got to unload this feed the pigs load up with a couple of empty bins and go and refill them and as part of that phone call I was talking to the proprietor we've spoke several times about working together on some things she is going to be basically dedicating a space in another shop next door to the fruit and vegetable shop for running workshops, community workshops. And we're very, very keen to work together, both of us, on a lot of the sort of self-sufficiency stuff that I do every day. So running things like cheese making courses, preserving courses, all the sort of stuff that I'm doing here, along with foraging courses that operate from there as a base. So uh, we had a really fantastic conversation actually about how we're going to progress that so I need to um, do a little bit of, of work paperwork really getting together a list of the different courses that I can do how long they take when I can run them what they would cost things like that so uh, that's another little job that's landed on my plate for this weekend so along with all the usual stuff and harvesting a pig and building a butchery is turning into, I mean, it was always going to be a busy weekend because every day is busy, but it's turning into an even busier weekend than I could have anticipated. So I'm going to unload this now and then head out and collect that feed. So I'm on my way back to the house now with a car full of bins, full of animal feed. And I had a feeling, I don't know what was telling me, I took two bins and uh, the shop that I've just been to, we have a two bin rotation. I take two bins there, leave them empty and I come back when they're full with two more. And for some reason, because I had a spare bin at the pigs, I thought, should I take three? Then they've got a spare one there and I didn't. And I wish I had because I've just had another phone call from another one of the shops I collect from and they have a one bin rotation and it's full. So I am kicking myself because uh, today's schedule is becoming more and more cramped. So much so that I could really do without walking up through this field that I'm doing right now. But 
I couldn't help myself because as I was coming down that road there, I saw some white patches in this field that looked like they could be mushrooms. There wasn't anywhere for me to stop and check with my binoculars. So all that's ended up happening is I've wasted my time because they are bits of paper from McDonald's. So I will pick up the rubbish that's in the field before I go. But uh, what a shame, I was hoping I'd be able to show you some nice big horse mushrooms or something. Anyway, I guess we'll, uh, I guess we'll head back to the car now and uh, get home, get this lot unloaded, load up with another one and then come back out. But what might happen now, I'm borderline ready to make the decision not to, not to harvest the pig today and to, to do it next weekend because I think I'm really up against it now. It's probably two o'clock or close to it. I haven't even started building the butchery yet. And I just think I'm giving myself too much to do this weekend. So I think I'll get the butchery built this weekend and I will harvest, slaughter and butcher at some point in the next seven days or so. And I didn't make it much further down the road before I came across this giant mat, giant patch of mushrooms that I believe to be, well, which are shaggy ink caps and I think some regular ink caps. There's quite a haul here of shaggy ink caps. So I'm going to harvest some of the younger, whiter specimens to take home and then be on my way. Well, I've no idea what the hell that is. <laughs> Never seen that before. Apart from in that game that we had as kids called Pass the Pigs. So in my imaginary world uh, that I invent in my head, I was going to be halfway through building the butchery by now and I would have already probably slaughtered the pig and either have it hanging or be ready to hang it. And uh, obviously my imaginary world has not come to pass at all. Now, now I'm not claiming that this has affected me very much, but as you can see, we're actually babysitting for two of my nieces, which has monopolized obviously my wife's day. <laughs> you saw Khaleesi earlier. So my wife's up against it as well. She's feeling a little bit like she's not got enough hours in the day. And uh, due to these, and it's not a complaint, but due to the, uh, the two phone calls I've had from the fruit and veg shops, that's probably taken up another, I don't know. But when you factor into my day, the time I'm now gonna spend placing these beautiful mushrooms, slicing them and dehydrating them, it's easily gonna be an extra couple of hours gone in my day. But uh, like I say, not a complaint. I've worked very, very hard to make these problems for myself. So there you go, not a complaint, but it is a comment. So. Um, a little bit further behind than I might have liked to have been. The time is half past three already and I've not even started constructing the butchery. So I'm gonna do these, go out and collect that next load of animal feed from the shops and then whatever time I've got left today, deal with a chick that's hatched while I was out in uh, the temporary bedroom that we've got for my niece. <laughs> Just one, love. Okay, and maybe more coming from that's from our meat hens. Um, yeah, so I think I made the right decision to put off the actual harvesting of the pork until maybe tomorrow, maybe next weekend. We'll see how time goes, but definitely not today now, which is a little bit of a shame. But there you go. Right, I'm gonna get these done, go off and get that. Hang on a minute. Right, tell me on the camera. Got a little tip. Have you? Yeah. What, did it come out of an egg? Yeah. Did you see it come out of an egg? Yeah. <gasps> Was it exciting? Yeah. High five? Yeah. So we've got all of our shaggy ink caps in the dehydrator now. Look at that, we've got about five full trays all dehydrating. And 
And I dread to think how much you'd have to pay in the shops for that much wild mushroom, but just growing on the side of the road. Next, my niece is going to show me my baby chick that's just hatched, aren't you? Come on then. Oh, there he is. Okay, little fella. So, back out again now to do uh, what has to be the last trip of the day. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. I literally, I haven't even started the project that was earmarked for consuming my day. But uh, there we go. My my wife, bless her, she got up at uh, half past five this morning and was outside by six because she knew she had our nieces to look after. And uh, she went out and did like everything she wanted to get done super early or as much as she could get done super early. And she just said to me that uh, looking after our nieces as much as she loves it. And I, I genuinely mean that she loves it. She absolutely loves having our, our young nieces here. Um, but as much as she loves it, she says in terms of like productivity and being able to achieve things and getting the sort of things you'd normally get done done, she said it's like having a flat tire. <laughs> and it just, yeah, you know, if you've got kids, obviously we've got kids and I remember when they were that old. And uh, again, like so many people, it was mostly my wife who did the taking care of the kids at that age. And that's something I'll be eternally grateful for. But you know, you get that sense, you know exactly what she means when she says that. It's like having a flat tire. <laughs> Luckily for me, my wife did do a lot of the sort of communal jobs and some of the jobs that are mine primarily. You know, as I've said before, there isn't a job that's mine and a job that's hers, but there are jobs that I tend to do and she tends to do. And she did a couple of the jobs that I would tend to do at the weekends, like filling up the uh, the rat bait boxes and stuff like that. So um, I am just yet again in awe of how amazingly incredible my wife is at just just being an absolute soldier and getting things done she's incredible anyway uh back off then back home um unload the next lot of bins and then hopefully well not hopefully i'm going to force myself to start building this butchery today even if i have to uh, work in the dark i think i'm okay with that i might even light a little fire to work by so i've just trimmed some of this ground what i'm going to do i think i'm going to trim maybe a little bit more here and then build it right here because there's a natural divot in the ground so it means I'm going to be able to put my four corners there and then have this lower bit in the middle making everything else less work basically I need shorter walls lower roof to get my height to hang my animal so uh, yeah okay so I've got all my gear, I've got all my equipment that I need, I think. And uh, here we are, I'm gonna build my butchery. So realistically, I'm not gonna get it finished today. I'm quite happy to stay for several hours. I might get it finished, who knows, who knows? But I'm just gonna do what I do. And uh, having the fire will help, it will help to keep me out here. But let's get the four corners up, some roof trusses and then we'll have a look and we'll see if we can get the tarpaulin over today then that will be a success the reason being it means i can leave all my kit up here so tomorrow morning i can come straight back up and make a start again but uh, we'll see how we get on anyway i'm going to wrap up this video now today's vlog and uh i'll speak to you tomorrow but the the butchery construction and everything else i will probably include in tomorrow's vlog but also it will be a standalone video where I'll talk about it in much, much more depth about what I'm building, why I'm building it, how I'm building it and why I'm making the choices I am about the way I'm building it. But there you go. So busy day as always and uh, I will speak to you guys soon if you do find these videos valuable there's several ways you can support us you can find a link to our patreon in the description you can also find our podcast which is out every Monday Wednesday and Friday that is the self-sufficient hub podcast so come check us out there you could also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so like this video and leave us a comment let me know what you think I'll speak to you guys soon cheers thanks for watching